What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I give you my thoughts, my opinions, and some scores on various whiskeys that I try. So if that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our review. Today we're gonna to be looking at the Legig 10 year old. So stick around. So Legig is from the Tobermory distillery on the Isle of Mull. It's similar to Tobermory, but for the Legig distillate, they've added some peat in there. And it's known for being one of the more peat forward whiskies from the islands region, or at least the islands region excluding Isla itself. Apparently the water they use to make this whiskey flows under some fields of peat on its way to the distillery. Now, I don't know if that actually affects the character very much or at all, but it definitely makes for a cool story. Now this whiskey comes in at 37 ppm or parts per million. ppm is basically a scientific way of gauging just how peated your whiskey is. Uh, and some people care a lot about that. I don't really care that much. Uh, that's mainly because I've had a lot of whiskeys that are maybe lower in the PPM spectrum, but have a big peaty kick. Or vice versa, high PPM and not very peaty in terms of the flavor profile itself. So it's not really something that I pay a lot of attention to, but maybe you care, and if you do, there you go, this whiskey is at 37. Now like Tobermory, Legig saw some rebranding happening in 2019, and when that happened, the company basically put out some new bottles, some new labels, and they updated their core range. Uh, we got some new Tobermory's in there, but for Legend 10 itself, I'm not quite sure what happened. For example, with Tobermory, your 10 became a 12. Uh, but with Legend 10, it's got the same age statement, we've got the same ABV, and there's nothing to indicate that they actually changed the formula. Although they might have, they often do that during rebranding, so I'm not sure. I will say this though, I think it's a better whiskey than it used to be. So I'm not sure if they changed anything in 2009 specifically, or just somewhere along the way, but I do think it's a better whiskey now. Now for your new Legend core range, you've got basically only two bottles. You've got your 10 year old and you've got your 18 year old. Obviously the biggest difference there is gonna be the age, but beyond that, your 18 year old is gonna be sherried, the 10 year old is not. Now I'm not quite sure how this is matured. I probably should have researched it before this video, but I didn't, uh, but I would assume it's just 10 years in bourbon barrels. So yeah, you have your 10 and you have your 18 year old and not much else. So it's not a very big core range, but I will say this, it's a lot more present on the shelves. It's much more visible than it used to be. Uh, I remember back in the day, if you'd go to a shop in Taiwan, you weren't likely to find much from either brand. Uh, and that's just not true nowadays. Nowadays, most places will have Tobermory or Legig or both. And beyond that, they might have something more than the core range. The, they also have a series of limited expressions out, wine finishes, that kind of thing. So I think it is a good time to go exploring the brand, check them out, see what they're about because they're making some really cool stuff. Uh, so yeah, with that said, why don't we jump into the 10 and see what this one's all about. Our ABV here is going to be 46.3%. We do not have any chill filtration and we have our natural color. So I know this is kind of the standard from Tobermory, but still credit where it's due. Good job. All right. So the color of our whiskey is kind of like this uh, honey color here. Um, good looking bottle. As I mentioned in my review of Tobermory 12, I do like this look. It's a good presentation. For presentation, I'm gonna give this a four and a half out of five. It's good. Simple, clean design, very modern. You have unchill filtered marked right here. Small label lets you appreciate the natural color of the whiskey. And beyond that, I just think it's a nice aesthetic. It looks good on the bar shelf. So yeah, well done. Okay, let's check out the nose here. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so uh, you definitely have peat in here, but it's not a big, loud, strong peat. It's very mellow, and it's also very sweet. You also have some salt, some rocks, some honey, some vanilla in here as well. Uh, maybe kind of like a bit of lemon cake. There's a citrus touch, but a very sweet citrus touch. Uh, and there's also kind of like this, I, I don't want to say weird, but very unique fermented, almost cheesy note to this. So uh, really interesting stuff. Not very complex, but interesting, unique, and very characterful. All right, let's give the palette a go. Okay. Salty up front, uh, lemon cake again, vanilla, lots of like rocky mineral notes in here, uh, good dose of peat and some brine. Now for the finish. Mm. Okay. So you still have that lingering sweetness in here, really mellow sweetness to this. Um, 
your peat, your mineral notes, and your brine, those come together pretty seamlessly, very harmonious. You also have those cake notes, so like honey cake, uh, vanilla cake, uh, lemon cake, all these cakey notes as well. And finally, you have that kind of cheesy element, that fermented flavor, which I know sounds odd, but really, really works. Decent complexity, medium in length. For me, it seems like everything coming out of Tobomori these days is going to be interesting, it's going to be characterful, and it's going to be pretty good. Uh, and this one's no different. I really do like this one. I'll spoil it for you right now. I think it's a wonderful whiskey. Uh, and Legic in general, I think they're doing amazing things. I think their 10s a stunner, and I also think their 18-year-old is a stunner. So it seems like they can do no wrong. So yeah, I do think this is a really good 10-year-old, clearly. And beyond that, I think it's a really nice alternative to an Isla whiskey. I think it's similar enough, but it's also different enough. You're not getting Ardbeg or Laphroaig or Lagavulin here. Um, it has its own unique set of flavors. Like I said earlier, you have that kind of like cheesy fermented note, which may not sound appealing, but you got to remember it's a peated whiskey and some descriptors we use for peated whiskeys are pretty out there, you know, band-aids, charcoal, medicine. So within that context, it does work. And I think it adds a lot of character to the whiskey as well. Now, this isn't a whiskey that's going to like stun you with its complexity. Um, it's not a basic whiskey, but it's a straight shooter of a profile. It's more just how all the elements kind of come together to make it kind of distinctive. Uh, like I said, you have that fermented note, you have lemon cake in here, you have those maritime notes, you have peat in here. So they all come together, it's really harmonious, and they make something that's unmistakably legend. For the score, I'm giving this 89, and I know that sounds high, but it's just a whiskey that I really dig. These flavors check a lot of boxes for me, I think it's delicious. So an 89, and beyond that, I'd score this highly in terms of reachability. Now reachability I kind of keep separate from the regular score because it's more of a visceral thing. It's just how often do I come back to the bottle? How often do I reach for it when I see it on the shelf? And this one wins on both counts. Not only would I give it a high score, it's something that I come back to quite often. And I'm not the only one who's digging it these days. I think both Tobermory and Lejeg have been pretty well received, especially recently by the whiskey community. Uh, I think after the rebranding in 2019, they had much better distribution, so they've become a lot more visible on the shelves and the whiskey shops. And beyond that, I do think that they've ramped up their quality. I think they're making better whiskeys than they used to. So you bring those factors together, and I do think you're going to see increased interest in the brand. I think they're already making some really cool stuff, and I'm interested to see what they put out down the line as well. Now for value, this one's kind of a no-brainer. Obviously, I think it's a really delicious whiskey, but it's also a very affordable whiskey very budget friendly and if you like those kinds of flavors so if you like peat and isla and island and maritime flavors then you're probably gonna like this one as far as i'm concerned this can go toe to toe with anything from isla and absolutely hold its own so it's a great whiskey at a great price if you haven't tried it go check it out okay that's it for me today guys thank you very much for watching do me a solid and hit that subscribe down below click that little bell icon and smash the like also you know i want to hear from you so have you tried legend 10 what did you think? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Tell me why. And finally, let me know down below what you would like to see me review next, and I'll be sure to keep it in mind before my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.